Hi there, Jeff Coughlin. Welcome to this first instalment of this new project where we're going to be looking at using the Humbrol acrylic dropper paints and um, over the course of the build of this 70 second scale Grumman F4, F4 Wildcat, we're going to be um, working on hand painting using these uh, the paints, um, detail painting and of course spray painting. So throughout the whole plan is to um, use Humbrol products. Um, in my experience, they work by far the best um, combination of um, the acrylic paints with um, acrylic thinners. And um, if we do that, then we should be really successful in terms of having a good result with, um, with the, the outcome. Um, so in the this first um, instalment, I think what we need to do is just work out a quick plan. And for me, um, that's about deciding, OK, so what scheme are we going to go for? We've got the kit, which is a lovely kit. It really is um, a, an impressive bit of plastic. Um, nicely detailed. In fact, um, very nicely detailed for a second, 70 second scale kit. You can just see here, have a quick look at the um, lovely detail on the cylinder heads here. And... Um, even the cockpit, we've got some really nice um, raised detail here on the instrument panel. And then you've got some more kind of refined um, details, so not least of which you've got some really nice recessed panel line detail there. You've even got a really neat wing fold if you want to do the wing fold. I'm not actually going to um, uh, uh, add the wing fold this time, partly because on, on the Wildcat, when it closes its wings, it pretty much closes up everything else and it has almost like this kind of canopy thing over the top. So uh, I didn't really want to want to do that. And I think for the purposes of the, the exercise, which is very much to see how these paints work, then we want to see as big an area on show as possible. So we'll have spread wings for this particular one, but we do get separate um, ailerons, which is nice. And then uh, when you come across here, just to check out uh, the other final details, you've got a really nicely detailed undercarriage, decent little um, cockpit tub. I mean, that lovely bulkhead here, look at that, even with the lightning holes in the side. So really impressive for um, 70 second. And I think one of the real features of the Wildcat, and there are many, um, is this, really a chunky undercarriage and most of which is on view and of course you get all the retraction gear here molded onto the uh, back wall which is great uh, and some very nice just to finish it off some very nice fabric effect on the control surfaces so lovely kit lovely canvas to work on uh, i think here um so as i said we're talking about choice uh, we need to work out which scheme you've got two great options you either get um this one uh, which is a, a marine corps um, aircraft VMF 223 from Henderson Field, Guadalcanal in 1942 um, and that's nice because you've got this overall matte US dark grey um, with um, gold grey undersides uh, which is pretty much uh, the scheme um, or you've got this one which is a little bit more colourful um, which is from USS Enterprise CV6 1942 um, US mark uh, matte uh, dark grey over surfaces, over the um, the US gold grey undersides. So similar, but just with a, a more coloured fin. Um, I don't know, for me, um, I, I really liked uh, this particular scheme, the Marine Corps scheme. And also uh, on the box art, you've got this fabulous uh, artwork here. I'm sure that's Alan Tooby's work, it looks like it. You've got, uh, you've got a great image here of um, a Wildcat um, taking down a, a, a Zero aircraft here. Uh, in the Pacific. So um, I think this is the one we're going to go for. Um, and so that's that's the plan. Uh, so in terms of phase one, um, then we need to assemble all the paints. I've started to assemble those here. Um, so if we get all of this ready, which is is great, then, then we should be, be good to go in the very near future. Um, we have got what? Um, we've got the, the thinners at the ready. We've got a little mixing palette. Really useful to have one of these. Um, and uh, Humbrol do those in the range as well, so we're going to have that to, to hand. Um, quick look at the instructions, stage one. Let's have a look here and just see where we're at. Usually we start somewhere in the cockpit, and surprise, surprise, that's no different in this case here. Um, and as you can see, um, we we'll start with the tub, work through the tub, and then we sort of, in effect, move forward uh, towards the, the, the engine and undercarriage bays here at the front. So. Um, plenty to, to, to be getting on with and in the next video what we'll do is come back and we'll start to prepare the parts um, 
But before we do that, um, I think what we need to do is just give one thought to uh, a little bit of reference. So we'll come back for part two and look at some of the options for that. In this next part, I just want to take a, a couple of moments to give you some thoughts on uh, reference material. I mean, for sure, I would plunder the net. Um, if you have access to the internet, then, I mean, just check out on search engines, particularly those with images, you know, Google images, uh, j j just to one. Um, and you'll get multiple, multiple, multiple pictures um, to, and so, so why? So what's the point? Well, for me, it's all about having a really clear view right at the outset. Exactly what am I looking to create here? We've already made a decision about the wing fold. It's going to be spread. Um, but I want to get um, a really good idea about um, the overall look of aircraft in the Pacific theatre, particularly Wildcats. I want to get an idea of how, how do they how do they weather, you know, particularly with things like exhaust staining, uh, in, in weathering around the cowls, around the cockpit, those general airframe de details, that kind of thing. Um, and we're only going to get that unless you really know your subject inside out before you start the project. Um, I, I don't. Um, so um, as much as I love the Wildcat, I just love its kind of stubby, kind of chubby looks. I think it's got tons of character. Um, I want to try and make sure we capture that character in the project. So um, it's going to have some weathering, I think, but not over the top. This is not an exercise hugely in weathering. This is about trying to show how we use these paints. So um, that that's that I'm always going to be be mindful of that. But nonetheless, it could well be that you've got some um, uh, book references as well. And I've just uh, collected four here that that I had off my uh, uh, quite growing library now. I don't, I don't know. Books are a bit of a, a bit of a weakness, but uh, I think good reference material is essential. So particularly these ones here, the in detail and scale books are absolutely excellent. I uh, heartily recommend these because you've got lots and lots of good quality color profiles you've got often colored pictures which is impressive from from the period good as i said got good walk around um stuff in here so if you can get these um and i would have a good look into in detail website for them um squadron signal always reliable um again they do good walk around references um lots of good opportunities to get uh, and capture a few hints and tips on detailing there um, although again, you know, this is going to be an out of the box build as much as possible, apart from I imagine the belts, the seat harness, and we'll have a look at that when we get to it. Um, just a quick check to see whether we've got decals, uh, for the belts. No, we haven't. So that's fine. We'll just have a look at that later. Um, and, um, and, and so on. So don't lose sight. This is of the fact that this is a really important part of the build is to be clear. Where am I going with this build? What do I want the end result to look like? And then all the time we're building and building and building towards that end goal, which is, is clear from the outset. Saves a huge amount of time. And for me, it saves an, it saves all the questions. You know, you don't need questions at the end about oh, how much more weathering am I going to do? You know, what, how far have I gone? Have I ever done it? If you knew what you were trying to create in the first place, that shouldn't be, be an issue at that late stage. And I want to enjoy this. So uh, I'm sure you do too. So it's all about having a clear goal right from the word go. OK, so that's references. So I think when we come back, we should be able to get on with the build. Preparation of the parts for painting is really important. And what I'm getting at here is that the parts, all parts, uh, pretty much from uh, the manufacturers, um, are injection molded and uh, in order to release the parts from the mold there's something applied to the uh, the molds called a release agent which helps the parts to come away nice and cleanly that's good because we get nicely molded parts it's bad because um, very often the parts have got a very very fine uh, film uh, on them sometimes you can even see it uh, but in this case um, just taking the parts out and feeling them you can just they just feel like there's there's just something uh, something there uh, it's a very very fine oil which is no good at all for, for for hand painting on or even spraying if you if you paint straight or try to paint straight onto it very often you'll find that the paint starts to separate doesn't matter which manufacturers paints you use but it's particularly um, prone I found for for acrylic paint so um, what we need to do is simply clean the parts, Sim simple and easy part of the process. 
So to do that, um, two things really. One is that I use isopropyl alcohol for this. All I've done is decant some into um, a little jar. And okay, so readily, what is that stuff? Well, to me, uh, all I, I often use is my Tamiya uh, X20A thinner. That's just readily available. It's always on the bench anyway for some other projects. And so it works well for this. And all I've done, as I said, is decant some in here and get a nice clean tissue quick up end and then we just brush what work our way over the surface of the parts don't need to get too um, too navel gazy about this but certainly just a good good firm wipe of, of the parts and that should um, that should should be that and now those will be ready for, for painting. For other parts that have got a bit more detail, a bit smaller, perhaps like this one here, just take a little flat brush, get some of the isopropyl, uh, isopropyl alcohol in it and just, just work that into the surface as you, you can see here. Um, then again with our tissue, just dab that off and that will come away and come off nice and cleanly. And then our part is now ready uh, full painting. Okay, so I found that is a useful part and almost essential part of the process. Um, and um, we'll be back soon and we'll have a look at what the next stage is in that process. <laughs>